Hello guys, so I'm just going to show you how I undervolted and overclocked my razor blade. This is different from my setup around two years ago when I first got a computer. So I'll show you. So I use UXTU right here to undervolt my CPU. Now this is the only realistic up-to-date software that does this because I have the 6900HX. So that means I cannot use Intel XTU and I cannot use throttle st stop. So again, all this is dependent on your laptop. So you have to try this individually. There are lots of guides on under 14 overclocking. So I'll just briefly mention it and I won't go into any details. So in short, I did a temperature limit. Actually, no, it's already applied, but the software is a little bit weird. But anyways, so my undervolt profile, I set the temperature limit to 80 degrees. And then for per core optimizer, I have negative 13 for all cores. Now, if you were to search up some videos with AMD CPUs, you have uh, another option called AMD Curve Optimizer, where it applies an offset for all cores. But for some reason, I don't have that. So I have to type in the same number for all these cores. Now, the way you test if this is stable, well, at least how I did it was I use OCCT. Because running games is not sufficient to find out if your undervolt is stable. So OCCT, I highly recommend it. It catches air fast. You don't have to leave it running for hours, at least for me, when it finds the airs. But yeah, you just do stability test and you got all these options here. So yeah, that's UXTU. And of course you can make it so that it automatically applies on startup. So I have it on boot, minimized, reapply. This is the critical option. So there you go. Now for my CPU, I use NSI Afterburner. Now I spent a whopping two days trying to find out the right curve. Oh, I forgot. I have it minimized. So yeah, let me just, um, I guess I'll go over this. Memory clock, I was able to up this to 1100 without any artifacts. But if I see any future artifacts, I'll tune this down to a thousand probably. But the curve editor is the critical one. So the way undervolting works is you're making the GPU reach higher clocks while having less voltage. It's a little bit different from just the normal undervolt where you just lower everything or even overclocking because I'm not just raising everything up by certain offset. I'm, I've am i picked specific points where I need the GPU to hit a certain clock. So you can see there are basically three critical points. So for one of them is this one. Let me just click on it. So this one goes up to 1890 and this one goes up to 1762, which I have it set to 1800 when I applied it. So when you apply the curve kind of shifts and this one, I have it set to 1700. So lots of overclocking, not overclocking, underclocking guides basically tell you to do this one time, but you don't have to do it just once. If you monitor your GPU clocks versus their voltage, you will eventually kind of figure out the sweet spot between when you want the GPU to start hitting certain clocks and to make it not crash. Because if you try to give it too much work to do while having not enough power, of course it will crash. So that's kind of what I did. And um, I guess I'll just film some benchmarks. Um, before I forget, so in my previous video, I had a section in the video where I went to the power plant and I kind of adjusted the processor performance boost mode. 
but I don't have to do that. So I just still disable it for battery. This basically means your CPU will never boost. So it'll run a stock clock. In my case, it's 3.3 gigahertz. But then I'm plugging, I have it on aggressive. Hi guys, so I'm filming this on my phone, but yeah, you can see I have Cyberpunk running. So I'll see how this performs compared to two years ago when I first did it. So of course I have to follow the original settings, which is, let me change that real quick, Ultra on ray tracing and performance for the super resolution. So how will hit apply and yeah. Here we go. So this time I got the stats up in the game directly so I don't have to tap out and look at hardware info. But yeah, we will see. I'm expecting it to be a little bit worse maybe. It's actually about the same. Now the th thing I've realized about this game when I was kind of using it as a stability test is that DLSS can sometimes generate what seem like artifacts but really not. So like if you want to be really secure about whether your GPU is stable, just turn off DLSS. So that means there'll be no AI tinkering with image and possibly producing some errors. But yeah, this game is actually very good for our stability test because it pushes both the CPU and GPU really hard. Well, in this case, for my computer, it's way more GPU bound than compared to CPU. But yeah, you, you can see my CPU is limited to 80 degrees. And my GPU is basically free to use whatever power that was throttled away from CPU. But yeah. Okay guys, this time I'm going to be doing 3D Mark. So I'll run the benchmarks Time Spy and Fire Strike because those are still pretty relevant. I, I'm not bothered to run Unit Engine Super Precision or Nugent Haven. But <laughs> I'll try to hold the phone as steady as I can for like good few minutes. But yeah, I'll say that um, it depends on how much time you want to give to kind of tweak your computer with undervolting and overclocking. For me, it took a total of a week between work and other stuff and then trying to find the right balance with this oh it doesn't show the hardware info but yeah it took me about a week in total to find my red settings and of course i do not regret it at all This benchmark is like what, at least a few years old, yet it's still really relevant. I do not know what the quality for the audio will be like on this phone to be honest. So I'm just praying that it will be good.
Okay, so it's finally starting graphics test one. So there will be two graphics tests and the final CPU test. And then I think you get the average of both GPU and CPU scores. That's what I would think. So hopefully the video will be clear enough so you guys can see the stats. I'll also say the thing about this particular benchmark for my laptop is it always uses lower voltage. So that means if I don't try to bump up the lower frequency to be used at well, I should say higher, a little bit higher frequency at the lower end of the voltage, it will affect benchmarks like this one. But I got that covered. So that's why I have the three main points where I set the clock to be at. Graphics test two. So right now my CPU is not being maxed, it's only at 72 degrees. It's only being used by 20-30%, so you know this is very GPU bound. This is also good Billy test I guess, but Cyberpunk is better. Something about Cyberpunk just stresses the GPU way more. Okay, and now we have the final CPU test. And what score did I get? A192. Nice. I only ran this benchmark once from way before. So I'm actually interested myself to see how much better I do.
because my GPU core clock is starting to go onto the upper end. So my upper half of my curve has been used. And also for the limit, it says power. So we're not being throttled by CPU. We're just being throttled by our power because it can't push. But we're already reaching boost clock on almost regular basis. So what more can I ask for, right? Like, according to my curve editor, my GPU can boost up to 2000 megahertz, but that's really asking for an unstable territory that I don't really want to get to. Maybe later when I have the time, I will try to make a bump for 2000. Okay, why is my phone not focusing? Okay, what did I get? I don't know how good is that. 